Welcome back to part five of my five-part series, where I compare the five U.S. companies approved by the Department of Defense. This week, Skydio. But be sure and stay till the end, and I'll give my opinion on which is the best of the group. Plus, as a bonus, you're not going to believe the use case I heard of today. So stay tuned for that one. But before I start, let me clarify something. My wife and I were talking about this, and I'm not sure you understand that just because these companies were approved by the DOD, they actually have a commercial version available to us. So all five of those manufacturers do produce one that's aimed at the consumer or commercial market. And a big thanks to those of you who have subscribed, who viewed my videos. It's a real apparent for the numbers that you want to learn more about starting a drone business. So next video, I'm going to concentrate on what it costs to actually start a drone business. So stay tuned for that one. So what's Skydio's story? Well, they were formed about seven years ago, Redwood City, California, formed by a group of MIT students. Their initial offering was the R1. This was a really big, enclosed drone, autonomous. Had some pretty good success. Their new offering is the Skydio X2E the E for Enterprise. They all ha also have an X2D for Defense. As far as weight, we don't know. We do know it has a 4K camera with a 100 times zoom, but there again, that's a digital zoom, so you're losing a lot of quality in that. It is foldable. Now that's unique for the Skydio. We just got the Skydio 2 in, and it's a non-foldable drone. So to have this one foldable is a big deal for Skydio because they've got six cameras involved on this, three on top, three below, and they use those to orient itself in space. So this is a big achievement for them. It also has the FLIR boson camera on it. It's ruggedized, IP53 rated. Flight time's kind of funny. They say 35 minutes expected, so they don't even know yet. Top speed, we don't know. Range about four miles, GPS operation at night. No geofencing. Obstacle avoidance they call omnidirectional because they've got those three cameras above, three cameras below, and the one in front. And they use all that for obstacle avoidance. Cost? This was a hard one to come up with. It looks like it's going to be around $20,000. And that's a lot of money. But in all of the forums that I've been reading, nobody's getting responses from Skydio. So what's that mean? Well, apparently they are just laser focused on the military app right now, and they don't even want to sell to consumers or people just wanting to buy a single drone. So for that reason, I think we can kind of rule them out anyway. Not to mention the fact, I don't think it's even released yet. What about use cases? We all still pretty much the same things, right? Search and rescue, military, law enforcement, building inspection, power line inspection, solar inspection, Tower inspection, fire inspection, public safety, worksite inspection, wildlife inspection, and of course the old volcano one, right? So how does the Skydio compare to the others we've talked about? Well, I'm really not even going to take the time to do that today because there was such limited information on the Skydio version that we really can't do a heads-up comparison with them. So we'll save that for a later date. So would this drone fit into your workflow? Well, $20,000 is a pretty big hit, right? Plus the fact I don't think it's available. Plus they don't seem to want to deal with the commercial market. So I'd say probably no on this one. If you remember, some time ago I told you that I had reached out to all five companies for information, asking them that was there anything new that might not be in their website that would be interesting to my viewers. So let's pull the handle and see the results on that, right? That's right, only Teal responded. And that was just this morning. Just got off the phone a little while ago with their director of sales out in Utah. Had a really good conversation. That drone is currently available. 
and they are reaching out to the consumer and commercial market, not only just military. So that's a real plus for them, and thanks so much for getting back to me. But that's where the funny story comes in. I told you about a new use case. Well, apparently, they have a customer in Georgia that's using it for pig farming. He uses it to herd his pigs. Not only that, he has mounted a prod onto this drone and uses that to poke the pigs to get them to go where he wants to go. That's a new use case I hadn't thought about. So pretty cool. So then I thought, what about DJI? Now they're known for poor customer service, but just what if they were one that would respond to me? So I reached out to them. And what's the result from DJI? Pull the handle again. That's right, again, nothing. So what does that mean for your selection? How would I pick one of this group here? It's really hard to say. I believe a lot in customer service. And just the simple fact that Teal reached out to me just to say, hi, what do you need? We're here, we can answer questions, is a real plus in my book. Plus, if you look back at the review I did on the Golden Eagle, it looks like a pretty good drone. So of all this group, the only one I would pick right now would be that Teal Golden Eagle. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I hope this was a good video for you. I hope you learned a lot from it. If so, give me a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. And if you feel like sharing it with your friends, please do so. That would be greatly appreciated. And if you have a video that you'd like to submit to me to include in one of my future episodes, please do so. That would be greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you for watching.